Supreme Court dismisses Atiku's appeal to file fresh evidence against Tinubu. I am Bola Oba, and this is Plus Politics. The Supreme Court of Nigeria has dismissed the application by the candidate representing the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in the 2023 presidential election, Alaji Atiku Abubakar, to submit fresh evidence in his case, which he filed asking the court to void the pronouncement of the All Progressive Congress's candidate, Bola Metinumbu, as president. Justice Inyango Koro, who led the seven-member panel of justices while reading the judgment said, I quote, The 180 days imposed for airing of election petitions is immutable and cannot be extended, unquote. He also went on to say, I quote, There is no paragraph in the petition to accommodate a case of forgery, unquote. The court held the facts and documents not filed in the petition cannot be considered in the appeal before the apex court and added that, quote, since the lower court has no jurisdiction to allow fresh depositions, this court also cannot allow tendering of fresh and additional depositions, unquote. The fresh evidence, Atiku and his party sought to tender uh, the academic records of Tinubu, which were handed over to him by Chicago State University CSU on October 2nd, 2023. For determination. What this means is that any matter not covered by any issue for determination is of no moment. Should the deposition be admitted, it will float in the appeal as this court cannot exercise original jurisdiction even if we are to start a new case for the appellants. <coughs> See Sanusi and Ayula, Chitex Industries and Oceanic Bank citation supplied. Finally, my noble lords, on this application, I wish to state that fresh evidence is not received as a matter of course. There are conditions which must coexist before the court can grant this type of application, as can be garnered from the decided authorities of this court. Joining me to dissect the decision of the Supreme Court is Olukayo De Eniton, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, SAN. Senior Advocate, it's good to have you on the program. Thank you. Thank you for the invite. Uh, can you give us a synoptic review of what transpired at the Supreme Court today? Well, um, yes. What uh, is that the Supreme Court of Nigeria delivered its judgment on the uh, appeal in respect of the decision of the uh, Presidential Election Petition Court, which is the Court of Appeal. Uh, sitting as court of first instance. And the decision, of course, was too prompt because there was a fresh application brought by the appellant in the person of uh, Alaji Atiku Abubakar to have the Supreme Court admit fresh evidence uh, by way of the deposition made by the uh, registrar of um, the Chicago State University in respect of whether um, the President Bola Metinubu attended the university and secondly in respect of his uh, certificate which had been to the INEC when the, his um, forms were submitted. The Supreme Court made 
short work of that application, uh, declaring it as uh, being unmeritorious. And in doing that, the Supreme Court went ahead to state the conditions under which it can receive fresh evidence, um, which are five, particularly that, and that's applicable to civil matters or civil appeals generally. The court went ahead to hold that with return petition, the limited case from the cannot be circumcised to every court sitting as an election petition court, whether called court or tribunal. Because um, the PDP made an argument which uh, my Lord Garuba stated to be specious in, in the fact or to the extent that the submission was made that the Court of Appeal was not mentioned in the Constitution and as such the 180 days should not apply. But the Supreme Court made a short talk of that and said, no, the 180 days applies to every court sitting as the court of first instance in respect of an election petition. And they went further to say that that limited period, having expired, they cannot receive fresh evidence because even the lower court cannot receive any fresh evidence. So declined, they declined jurisdiction in respect of uh, that application, that to the extent that the presidential election petitioner had ex exhausted its time limited under the Constitution, whatever it cannot do, the Supreme Court cannot purport to be doing the line under section 22 Ma of the say, Supreme Court Act. Yes. Malane say, uh, for many of us who are not uh, lawyers and who are not um, in any way, shape or form knowledgeable as, um, as you are mm -hmm. about the arcane nature of, of the law, uh, perceptively, the, uh, perception wise, they are thinking why would the Supreme Court refuse what they believe to be a bona fide, as you people will call it, you lawyers will call it, a prima facie evidence? Uh, is it the tradition of the Supreme Court to refuse accepting new evidences at this stage, or was this just peculiar? Okay, thank you. The basic and primary takeoff point is that election petitions are said to be sui generis. They are in a class of their own. Election, the con uh, the line the is made under the Electoral Act. So, it is not at large. Ordinary civil matters, usually there is no time limited for hearing, for instance, a case of uh, land, trespass to land. We've seen cases that have lasted 35 years. He goes to the Supreme Court, he comes back for a hearing. Another issue goes up, he comes back for a hearing. But in election petition, and the Supreme Court went to town specifically stating the mischief that was sought to be eliminated by limiting the time 
for conduct of petitions at the tribunal. What we all remember, at least those of us uh, who are old enough, would remember what happened with the Peter Albi petition in, uh, I think this will be 2007. Last day. Peter Albi went to seek his mandate and it's the trip or the journey of that petition to the Supreme Court took almost four years. And the person who was to be unseated had almost completed a term when the final decision removed in a one who validly won that election. So it was to correct such anomaly that the constitution was amended to now provide that at the tribunal, at the court of first hearing, it should not go beyond 180 days. Then the court of appeal in respect of governorship election also has a limited time to take a decision. So this was the mischief. And to go and say, oh, in respect of this one, and let us bring fresh evidence. The court said, no, then we will be going back to what it was, which we tried to kill, or which the legislature tried to kill in limiting the period. So election petition is a totally special kind of case that has timelines which you cannot extend, you cannot uh, circumscribe. And I'm, so, I'm, I'm yes. listening to you now, uh, trying to think in the very way a manner that an average person who is not as old as we are, who may not know the history, the electoral and the litigational history of elections in Nigeria, uh, thinking, uh, but you know what? Uh, this is like Ojoro, quote unquote. Uh, these lawyers come, you know, and these uh, learned uh, people uh, can be very funny sometimes. Why would they not just find a way of accepting the evidence? And they even went further to say that. Uh, and the, the, the evidence may not be useful when ordinarily an average person would think, okay, uh, although he may have graduated from the school, but the, the school said they did not issue the certificate and yet they presented the certificate. Just just trying to I, 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 seek your opinion. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm not uh, able to appreciate who you meant uh, is looking at the juro. I'm, I'm thinking the youngsters, many of our youngsters, I'm thinking many of the young ones uh, who probably are supporters of a particular candidate or, or party and who feel uh, the akinness of the law may be too restrictive to allow for what they believe to be right. Well, you see, um, cases are not tried on the basis of beliefs or uh, suggestions or suppositions. Cases are tried on facts and law. So once you do not have facts that the law would accept from you, your case is bound to fail. In this instance, the deposition that was brought had nothing incriminating as it were. And the Supreme Court said that very clearly. That, look, this deposition, and I think uh, uh, it was my Lord Agim, JSC, 
who took the pains to actually also state the grounds under which even the deposition, if it were to be looked at at all, he held it to be inadmissible because it does not even meet the conditions for admissibility. That is, if they were to say, oh, let us be magnanimous, which unfortunately the law doesn't even permit them to do. But assuming they had done, oh, let's be magnanimous, they would still have found that document as being inadmissible because it, there is nothing to authenticate it according to law. So, the, the was very, very clear. The Supreme Court was very, very... Malana Sikh, Malana let's go for a short break. Your line is a bit 4G. I think it's the, it's the telco. Uh, let's go for a short break. We'll bring you up. We'll bring you on back. Welcome back. We sorry the, the line was a bit 4G. Uh, we need to get the gentleman to give us uh, his contribution. Is very much invaluable contribution without all the disruptions of uh, of the line. Uh, my line is sick. Are you back? Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, please continue. You were making some point the other time. I had to cut you because okay. of the line. Yes. Um, so the Supreme Court equally went ahead to hold that this deposition that was being sought to be brought in is not anchored on any of the grounds of appeal that were filed. It is not anchored on any issue that has been presented for agitation before the Supreme Court. So there is virtually nothing, even if they were to say, let us admit it, though they held it to be inadmissible for want of jurisdiction. But if they had chosen to lean over backwards, to bring it in, there was no nail in the grounds of appeal or in the issues formulated. The seven issues formulated, none of them could anchor this fresh evidence. So it was rightfully swept into the dustbin of ignominy. Uh, uh, let me let me take you now in the direction of the second petition, because two petitions were dealt with today. Uh, we know that on Monday, yes, the petition of the APM was uh, was withdrawn or uh, withdrawn. somewhat uh, it was withdrawn and uh, so, but accordingly dismissed. Uh, you have taken quite uh, a good number of time within the context of the limited time we have to to give illumination to the reasoning of the uh, of the law lords on on uh, uh, vice president Atiku's petition on uh, yes on the petition of the presidential candidate of the labor party what's your what's your take of the reasoning of the of the court well, the labor party petition also in respect of oh, sorry in respect of the appeal six issues were argued his lordship okoro jse held that of those issues five had already been taken care of in the article petition and the only one that was unique to the OBP petition has to do with the issue of double nomination of uh, the vice president. 
and they held clearly that that issue should not even, of course, having resolved five of the issues in the article petition, similar issues that were raised in the article petition, there was no need to go step by step analyzing the Ariash, arguments. Ariash, and Ariash, the says, again. Those issues, yes, they held that those issues which are common should abide what has been decided in the article petition, um, in the article appeal. So they then zeroed in on the only one that was unique to the Peter Obi appeal. And that was on the specific issue of double nomination of the vice president, which they held should not even have been raised at all. Because whilst the petition was being had, the Supreme Court had decided that issue that the vice president was not doubly nominated. And having decided that issue, to bring it before them again that they should look at it is totally unwarranted, unnecessary, and a waste of, 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 of scarce judicial time. So they were not going to even uh, uh, look at that one because a decision had been made. And that in the decision of the a presidential election petition court, they had referred to the decision of the Supreme Court on that issue. So if the lower court has referred to the decision of the Supreme Court on an issue, why are you still appealing on that singular point in respect of which the decision was anchored on the Supreme Court decision? So they threw that out immediately, and the other five issues having abided what had been decided in the article appeal, that appeal was dismissed. In fact, it is the, the, the fastest decision that most of us have witnessed in respect of uh, an appeal that was uh, strenuously argued, and in respect of which the grounds of appeal had uh, well over uh, 50 grounds. It, the entire thing took less than uh, five minutes. Uh, somebody, From somebody said. Consideration to end. Somebody said just ten lines that it took the Supreme Court just 10 lines to dismiss the appeal of uh, the Labour Party candidate. Uh, Lana Sik, yes. we really, really have to thank you for this wonderful uh, session with you and the illumination you've given to the reasoning of the court on the two appeals had today uh, thank you very much. We, we thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, uh, we all look forward to the government now facing the work of governance. Oh, yes. Without uh, any distraction. Uh, at this juncture, Nigeria needs it. I need it badly. Thank you. We have to go. Thank you. Have a good day. Uh, we go for a short break and when we're back, we continue from another perspective or dimension on the ruling of the Supreme Court today. Thank you. President Bola Tinubu has welcomed the Supreme Court verdict which upheld his electoral victory at the February 25th presidential election. He also sought the buy-in of Nigerians, promising to exceed expectations in terms of service delivery in the remaining years of his administration. He added that the court 
has done justice to all issues put up for consideration in the petitions on the merits of the law without fear or favor. However, there has been various reactions to the Supreme Court's decision and one to discuss at this juncture is how a Nigerian in the UK diaspora views today's Supreme Court judgment. Joining me to discuss this is Eric Chike Nzekwe, Eric Chike Nzekwe, humanity advocate. Eric is based in our UK diaspora. Eric, good to have you on our set virtually this evening. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, viewers. We really, we really want to thank you so much. Eric, uh, what has been the reactions that you've, uh, you've taken uh, since the pronouncement of the Supreme Court today in, in your locale there in the UK or from uh, around you? Um, majority of um, Nigerians in, in diaspora um, I must say, I'm not interested in party politics. The only thing they want is good governance. And whoever they can bring about good governance is the person they will embrace. Um, they've yearned for a change in government and the style of governance that have continued um, for years in Nigeria, and which has not favored the masses. So that was that was this vavavum about having a younger person to govern the country so that at least we can be able to see a change. So as it is as it is the we have a choice. The court has spoken. Um the only thing I believe that we will all do is to embrace the new government and support him in whichever way possible. I believe a lot of people are not happy. Some are happy. But then, that is our country, and we don't have any other country but Nigeria. So it is incumbent on the president, Ahmed Tinubu, to change the narrative. And for all those negative views and the negative stories that have lingered, it's just for him to change the narrative and bring about good governance because in Nigeria, there are only two industries in Nigeria at the moment, and that's uh, politics and religion. And the people are the commodities. So if Tinubu can bring about a positive change, I think he will rewrite history. So all these negative things that have surrounded his uh, winning the election, people can easily forget it. But if it continues with what happened with previous government of uh, Buhari, then there will be a big problem. And he will not get the diaspora support. But if you begin to change things now, and then I think, and I believe, the diaspora will certainly embrace him. But if things continue to go the way it's going, um, the yearning of change will continue. Uh, and... Uh if I may ask, what are some of the specific things that those of you in the diaspora are not quite pleased about at this point? Um, the diasporans have not been pleased with Nigeria, um, the, the system of government in Nigeria. Um, as far as I can remember, um, from the time of Buhari, or not Buhari, Shagari till that. Um, I don't think Nigeria have really gotten it right, considering and in comparison with what we experience in diaspora. It's very simple to govern. It's all about jettisoning selfishness, and jettisoning tribal politics, um, I believe if we can do all that, and I believe that we, whatever wealth we accumulate, someday we will leave it behind, and we will not be here anymore. So, um, 
I don't think diasporans have been happy with the style of government in Nigeria from time of Shagari till then. So let's hopefully, if Tinubu can change the narrative, that would be good. And I believe that the diasporans don't have any trust in the judiciary in Nigeria. So today's... Uh, today's They don't have faith in Nigerian judiciary so and the Nigerian system. So and the federalism or the federal system of government that have been happening in Nigeria for years. So today's ruling of the court uh, somewhat to some of you who are somewhat cynical about uh, the judicial system is a, is a further validation of your cynicism. Is that what you're saying? Um, will I put it like that? It's so obvious. It's not all about the diaspora. Even the Nigerian masses. The Nigerians are home and the diasporans. I don't think they're happy with the judiciary. There are a couple of um, judgments that have happened now prior to this current issue, uh, um, presidential um, uh, tribunal and uh, appeal and the uh, Supreme Court judgment. I believe previously there are a lot of things that have, you know, that the judiciary has not gotten right. Uh, One, we can, need you, the can you be specific? It would be nice if we can speak to specifics uh, without just being generalistic. It would be nice to speak to. Uh, um, to be honest, I am not here to play politics. That's why I don't want to single anyone out. There are a lot of, I don't want to single specific issues or judgments out. Um, but there is one that happened where the guy, the, the, the former Senate president, Lawa, where he did not contest primary, he did not take part in the election, um, that um, the, the primary election in his party. And because he lost the presidential uh, primaries that he contested with Tinibu and, and some of the candidates, how the court turned around to make him the candidate of APC is what is still baffling. And when you look at it, you will now be able to ask yourself, where did the judiciary or where did the court get the evidence to make him the APC candidate? What is going on in Africa? What's going on in Nigeria? These are things I believe that the current, um, the incumbent who happened to uh, win the court case today, um, Bola Tinebu, I think he needs to do a lot so that he can write his name, you know, he can write his name on marble. So for you, for you at this point is more about uh, looking at the future and uh, leverage, leveraging the opportunity uh, to make a positive turnaround in, in the quality of governance to be delivered to the people. Exactly, you nailed it. That's exactly. You know, this meeting was impromptu. And, you I just know, informed I me. You just informed me half an hour ago. I've got a lot to say, a lot of things to say, but. You know, Nigeria is ours, it's me and you, it's all of us. So I want Tinubu's um, slogan to be the language of we in government. Uh, uh, we, we really decided to... Sure. Uh, to hello? He should... Yeah, can you hear me? I, I can hear you well enough. All right. The reason Tinubu should embrace all, every tribe in Nigeria... His government must have a national coloration. His government, I repeat, must have a national coloration. He must not be like Buhari. Buhari was more of an um, ethnic. How I don't know how to describe Buhari. So, but, but in the appointments, issue. but in the appointments he has made thus far, are you are you satisfied? Or no, you... not at all. Looking at it, even one of his supporters, is he, is he Asari the Kubo? I, 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 I just watched a few minutes ago um, complained about uh, Tinibu's appointment on recently. You know, his, his, his appointment is drifting towards tribal and ethnic um, alignment. So Tinibu should, if he wants to get the masses behind him, he should jettison such thought process. Even if he has made some mistakes, he should address it and make sure he carry every tribe, every state along with him.
Some people even intend to take him to court to ensure that his appointment must have uh, a national toleration and, uh, you know, he should in, uh, practice true federalism. Is it from your understanding of federalism, uh, do you think that with the present contraption, constitutional contraption in Nigeria, true federalism can be practiced? I don't think federalism is working in Nigeria. But if someone can come in and make it work, so be it. For me, I am an advocate of regional government. We are all regions who will be empowered to contribute their best to the center. That's my belief. That's my thought. Nigeria is too big. If you go to you, Nigeria should look at it and do some study. If I were to be in Tinubu shoe, what I would do is to ensure that by the time I leave government or by the time I finish my tenure, there won't be any other agitation. I and this not, and this should not be by military intervention or anything, but by dialogue. He should call a national conference where Nigeria will discuss the way forward and how best Nigeria can be governed. Eric, we really have to let you go now. Uh, we want to appreciate the fact that uh, we, we like almost stampeded you to do this, and yet you have been very, very engaging and quite uh, value adding. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Eric. We look forward to some other opportunities in the not so distant future. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for giving me the privilege. Thank you. Thank you, Eric.